India is taking count of its tigers, but the early results have dealt a devastating blow. In Baksa National Park, one of the 50 conservation zones, the iconic predator is now extinct. Do these early trends mean India is losing the battle to save its tigers? More than 40,000 foresters and scientists have been working across the country for the past year to try and map its tiger population. Which species is it? Tiger or panther? We will feed them all. It's a mammoth task spread over 21 states and nearly half a million square kilometers of extremely diverse landscape. The foothills of the Himalayas in the north, the cardamom hills in the south. From the lush green grasslands and steaming mangrove swamps in the east to the desert lands of the west, the tiger has made its home in almost every corner of this huge country. So how do you count tigers in such a variety of landscapes? To find out, we head to the northeast, to the state of Assam, home to one of India's most beautiful national parks, Kaziranga. These are the bountiful floodplains of the mighty river Brahmaputra. It is here one finds India's so-called Big Five wild species. The one-horned rhino, the Asian elephant, swamp deer, wild water buffalo, and, of course, the tiger. Kaziranga has made an early start on the counting process. Hundreds of foresters are looking for scat, or tiger droppings, as well as signs of a kill, or footprints. Wildlife campaigner Martin Hughes Games joins the teams as they first physically gather and log all these signs, before they can decide where to put camera traps to record each tiger. Can you see tiger pug mark over here? Oh yes, look at that. The team finds a trail of tiger pug marks. As they follow the trail, they're just in time to see a tiger disappear into the thick grass. This grassland is one of the most challenging landscapes in which to monitor and protect the tiger. Let me tell you very seriously, walking through the grasslands is not a relaxing experience. It shelters more than 6,000 wild animals many of them capable of killing a man. Each year, a significant number of guards die because of the very animals they're trying to protect. The safest way to patrol this terrain for tigers is on elephant back. These have been reared by the forest department. Each habitat comes with its own specific challenges. And look at this grassland. You've got no chance of seeing a tiger from the ground. So it's great to be up high on elephant back. But that has its problems too, because if the elephant comes across a rhino here, it can get frightened and bolt. Across the country, other teams are also gathering physical signs of the tiger's presence. But now paper forms have given way to smartphones, which collect and transfer data digitally to the central tiger computer. Ashish has just taken a picture of a pug mark here, so we know there's a tiger in the area, but just the picture on its own is not enough. This is where this technology comes in. First of all, you have to put some crucial information in. We're going on a new trail. Here it is. But first of all, where are we? Well. Got to select the state, Uttarakhand. There it is. Division. Well, we're in the Rajaji Tiger Reserve, like that. And now we're going to select the beat. We're getting smaller and smaller now. Our beat is the Looney beat. Now, the ranges on the beat can record absolutely everything that they see. So we found a tiger. So it's, we found a footprint, a pug mark. It's a tiger. Age of tracks and signs. Well, in fact, it's not old. 
it's very fresh. So we put in very fresh. OK, so that's the sort of level of detail. Now, this data will then go into the central database and people like you all over India are collecting this data. Thousands and thousands of forest guards are all doing this and this data is pouring into the central database. It's a brilliant bit of technology. For thousands of foresters who are part of this exercise, it's time to go back to the classroom. Old-timers like Raghuvia Singh here at the Rajaji National Park in northern India can feel the difference. The next step is to set up camera traps nationwide in all the areas where sightings have been recorded. So because there's so much tiger activity you know here, yeah. that's why you get the camera yeah. here. So normally one on one side, one on the other, oh, right. get, to get both sides of the tiger. Ah. Images from these traps can identify each tiger individually for the count. Over 28,000 locations have been identified and cameras installed. Though under threat from man, the tiger has proved to be a very resilient species. In India, it has managed to adapt to an astonishingly wide range of habitats, where humans struggle to survive, let alone track tigers. There is perhaps no terrain more challenging than this, the muddy, marshy mangrove swamps of Sundarbans. When you think about tigers, you think about them in jungles. You do not think about them here. I mean, the tigers here, they're small, but they spend their time often in the water. In fact, 9% of their diet is fish, a fishing tiger. There is hardly any fresh water available, and they've had to adapt to survive on the salty water of the marshes. Food is scarce too. So how did the tiger manage to survive in such hostile conditions? Imagine a 300 kilogram tiger walking through the mangrove swamps, sinking knee deep in the mud. The Sundarban tiger is a much smaller and sleeker animal, 100, 120 kilos at the most. It is built for the mangroves. It has evolved in these swampy habitats. The prey base it sustains on is also small. The cheetal and the wild pig the 100 kilo tigers is able to bring down quite easily. Also, the small size makes its food requirements less. It can live off these small prey and live in these mangroves. Today, fewer than 100 of these highly specialized tigers remain. These wildly diverse landscapes make it exceptionally difficult to monitor and count the tigers accurately. We need to rush. Crossing such creeks makes you feel extremely vulnerable. If the tiger wants to get you here, there's no way you can run. This has to be the most difficult place in the world to count tigers. Apart from the physical difficulty of getting around, here in the Sundarbans, there's every chance of being attacked by a tiger. And our chances of making a quick getaway are fairly limited. The tiger's adapted to move at high speed on the land, even in the water, and frankly, we're not. Armed guards protect scientists who dare to set foot on the tiger's land. After all, these tigers have a reputation for being man-eaters. More than 30 people are killed each year by these marshland tigers. No wonder even the armed guards are uneasy and eager to leave as soon as the cameras have been fixed. <laughs> <laughs>